it's ever one person. So it's great. It's great. One world I touched. So yes, but I'm also painting and making art, but it's different way of. Uh, Thank you. Okay, so um, now we are, uh, we have our next, I would like to present our next presenter. It's uh, uh, Alessa Gerashenka, the head of the Ukrainian Center of Concordance uh, from National University of Kiev Mojila Academy with the topic of research. So what do you see? Weasel art in peace building and reconciliation in Ukraine. So it was built great and connected. To us. Yes. Okay, please, uh, Alexa. Very glad to greet you all colleagues. And uh, uh, good news is that my presentation was 65 slides long and my scientific advisor advised me to cut it short and still since we are lacking in time i think it's good that it's only 25 slides <laughs> let me share it with you uh, mm, i am uh, exactly the field worker um, as uh, with the grass on a grassroot level, I started uh, dialogue facilitation and reconciliation uh, process in Ukraine, one of the many, um, in the beginning of 2014. And uh, uh, I encounter the problem that uh, Dr. Kisilova mentioned, it was very hard to engage the other party or I, I end up uh, conducting dialogues about the necessity of dialogues. So <laughs> that was a crisis. It was a dilemma of engaging people and the opposite party because it was uh, he or she were afraid to speak or take part in the discussion. And uh, I have observed that uh, the, um, the art works. So people are much better off together to discuss a movie or a, you know, exhibition of uh, artistic, uh, in artistic premises. So on the basis of their common catharsis, they are uh, more likely to discuss this as their common experience and then move towards discussing some harder, more complicated issues. So this is where I started. And I thought of conceptualizing this approach to help and aid other mediators and dialogue facilitators in Ukraine to start using art as a tool in peace building. This particular project I want to tell you about is uh, called So What Do You See? And uh, um, let's see how to, there you go. So here basically I display uh, uh, why I decided to do something uh, in terms of art, because uh, words were lacking uh, sense. They were either, you know, uh, adding fire to the conflict or just turning to cliches and it was not fruitful. Um, so uh, based on uh, Emmanuel Levinas approach towards ethics as first philosophy, where your ethics uh, appears from the encounter with the other, and also uh, on the book by Michael Schenk and Lisa Schirsch about uh, art-based peace building, where it is argued that uh, this artistic framework around the conflicts uh, works like a lens, helping to refocus and to build uh, conditions under which the transformation of conflict or, or the relationships and then the conflict is possible. I uh, came up with this uh, uh, project it is uh, like it goes like this. I uh, for the participants, I was suggesting sixteen, so to say, prompts, and uh, some of them were as the situation develops right now, and some of them were like wishful thinking, imaginary situation, and they were uh, to pick from this prompt and uh, draw the answer. So it's whether how I see you, the other, in the conflict, or how I see myself in the conflict, and then later on how you see me, or how you see yourself in this situation. And then the other uh, part is how I wish to be seen, how I wish to see you, etc. Very, very interrupting. We don't see your presentation, uh, dear Alessia. We don't see At it. All? Sorry, it mm -hmm. We see widescreen just so. Um, 
Yes. Let me try one more time. Yes. Um, yes, yes. You just just select maybe maybe the select screen. You just you should have to. Uh, you should have to. Um, Let's see. How about now? Yes. Now we Great. Are. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> so, uh, here are the 16 options that uh, the participants were choosing from. Uh, as I said, how I see or perceive myself in the conflict view. And then also I, um, I directed uh, some questions. Uh, uh, it's about the group identity, how I, we see each other or, or how we see uh, as a group this conflict and how we see our opponents as a group in this conflict and how we wish to see them. And then uh, the participant uh, had to submit the image in the response of the chosen prompt. prompt. And uh, it was my special point so that all the answers are anonymous. I only collected the information as regards of gender, uh, the place of residence and age. And also I uh, allow them to use about 10 words, whether to name the picture, because not everybody are very good in uh, uh, art. And, uh, or if they do like a comic strip, they can write the bubbles and write something in them. So the words would be assist in the picture, not just used separately. So um, as for outreach, I conducted 11 sessions in different locations and uh, participants represent uh, 42 cities of Ukraine. And uh, I managed to uh, cover also with this experiment uh, nine uh, cities from the occupied territory. There was a, a big luck. I was able to train the lady who was going back and forth to that uh, part of Ukraine, which is occupied, and also conducted this experiment there. So uh, this outreach is due to the fact that I was uh, conducting my sessions um, in the Institute for the Future and other universities. For instance, uh, Tavria University, who, uh, whose uh, students were transformed from Simferopol to Kiev, and 80% approximately of them in the beginning were internally displaced. So um, we had quite a good uh, city outreach and uh, that resulted, here you can see how many people from different uh, cities of Ukraine and towns drew the pictures. And the total number of the respondents were more than 300. I started it last summer and ended it uh, due to quarantine, obviously, because it was very important for me to explain the terms and all the matters in person. Um, the age, age range was uh, starting from 18. I was uh, thinking about engaging school children to do that, but I did this experiment myself and found out that it's a bit traumatizing. So I decided to that only uh, you know, uh, grown-ups can participate in order to, you know, we could have more uh, stable uh, uh, inner psychology. And uh, when I counted, uh, the gender representation was almost equal, which I think is very good. So I will uh, show you some of the pictures. For instance, here is the male, uh, age 45 from Kiev, who chose one prompt ICUS. And you can see that he sees uh, the other as a target and he would like to see the other as a friend. You can see it's the prompt number nine he chose. Or uh, here's a female from Gadec. Uh, we would like to see you as, and I can describe this picture. You have uh, Russia on the right side, Ukraine on the left side, and everybody is peaceful. And and there is hearts and sun and the peaceful sky, it says on the cloud. And there is no war and crossed out and no at all, which is anti-terroristical uh, operation. And um, here's some another example. This is a lady from Donetsk, we see you as. It's, I think, self-explanatory. Here's another guy from Kiev and he's 
he wants to see the other in International Criminal Court of Hub. Um, these are just few examples and I want to tell you about maybe the tendencies or patterns that I observed. Um, so in Kiev, most uh, women uh, projected, uh, produced the images of safe future, whereas men drew guns and borders. Guns and borders in general are very uh, thematic for the people who are taking part in this experiment, especially for males. Many of participants who are over 30 uh, express their uh, uh, answer to the prompt with the help of map and uh, separa separated by regions. And I think it could be attributed uh, to that uh, presidential campaign of 2004 when the uh, opposition was uh, produced. And you can see on the left side this uh, div division of Ukraine by uh, sorts. So the first sort is Western Ukraine, then the central is um, central, U and the second is the central Ukraine, and the third would be south and east. And I think that it was kind of a prolegomenon to, uh, to the conflict we are having now, because this uh, imprinted in the minds very deeply. It was like on TV every five minutes that time. Uh, in Lviv, uh, when I conducted experiment, it was interesting that uh, um, some people uh, draw the other as a marionette. Here are some examples. And uh, generally in Western Ukraine, many people uh, draw their replies using flags. And that tells me that they're very uh, particular about their national identity and it's very important for them. Uh, Whereas in uh, southern Ukraine, uh, uh, pictures are more or less neutral. You can feel their fatigue from the conflict and the desire to end it uh, some way or another. Here are some pictures from Donetsk, and I think I'm still thinking about how to present the results of these experiments to the public. But I think it's very important for the unoccupied territory of Ukraine to see that people on the occupied territory actually suffering very much because most of the participants from Lukansk and Donetsk draw themselves and uh, they uh, draw uh, themselves uh, with some you know, handicap. They were either limits in movement or in speech or in uh, transportation. Uh, Crimea uh, showed nostalgia of separation. These are some of the most typical pictures drawn uh, by uh, people from that region. Very interestingly, uh, I came across two almost exactly the same picture. One was from Lviv and another one from Donetsk. And I think it's very amazing. It's far eastern and far western parts of Ukraine. It has the crosses and thumbs and it says how many more. Uh, after uh, the participants took part in the, this drawing exercise, I was in, in, in a couple of weeks period, I was spreading up the questionnaire which I made as easy as possible to fulfill. Uh, there was a scale, so they didn't have to write uh, much and they can, you know, within a minute can be done with it. And I was asking them uh, uh, how they feel before the experiment. Was it easy to choose the prompt? Did the details appear uh, in the process or did they know what to draw right away? Did they discover something about themselves and did they feel better after the experiment was over? Here are the results that I get. Um, about equal amount of people um, knew that what to draw at once and um, another half uh, have some details come along the way and that leads me to conclusion that maybe they uh, led the subconscious lead the way while they were drawing and this is interesting. Um, uh, it was equally easy uh, or equally hard for some people, you can see that I mentioned that in the table, uh, to choose from suggested prompts and to come up with the idea of the sketch and I think this is normal due to the fact that some people are uh, not 
used to visualizing uh, the problem and they're not very uh, secure about their uh, drawing abilities. And then, uh, did you discover something about yourself as the result of participation? And uh, the vast majority did, almost 70%. Uh, among those uh, who did discover, there were some answers, uh, there were no same answers, but here are some examples. I didn't realize it would be so hard to do. Uh, our enemies want to see themselves just like we would like to see ourselves. I think it's a very interesting finding. Personal experience reflects my answer. And then generalization of we concept and how we are in reality diverse within this framework of we. Some people just write few words like compassion and fear, uh, talking about uh, how they felt about the experiment or in the process. The emotional state, it was interesting. Uh, in general, in average approximation didn't change. But when you go line by line, you can see that people either felt radically worse, even by two points usually, or radically better. And I think this could be attributed because uh, different Ukrainians have different uh, experience uh, of uh, this um, um, hybrid war uh, uh, going on in Ukraine. So for those who, um, you know, take it as a sad background of their normal life, uh, they feel better to be able to express their feeling and those who were experiencing serious losses and casualties. I think they were uh, a bit re-traumatized by this experience. That way their, their uh, condition uh, um, didn't improve and uh, actually worsen. The typical end comment I want to point out would be the process of drawing the image facilitated clarification of my own values and motivation in the conflict. And I think this is a core uh, finding of the experiment because uh, mm, uh, this is what uh, this is with this finding I want to conclude because with the great without the greater awareness we do not feel differently so we do not act differently and in the same time the more our perception to, of externals is uh, deeper. Um, the more we are, uh, we are uh, ready to change. And peace building is about social change and being able to transform. And this awareness, the self-awareness, realizing of uh, what I am and what I want is the root of this change. And this uh, artistic experience can offer a new frame for interpretation, the problem and the whole relationship around it and such approach uh, may provide a new momentum for conflict transformation in communities. There is another picture drawn by one of the participants with which I want to conclude and I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dionis. It was very fruitful and uh, it was very enjoying to see thank these you. works and uh, I think it shows a more a more direct way the perception of human being and their, and their struggle for life and for peace yeah. and maybe in those pictures we see understanding of sides that uh, our political leaders uh, cannot express in, in long speeches so thank you very much if, you have, if someone have a question I will, I will come back with your permission to the first slide because here this is the drawing by the 40 year old male from Donetsk and I love it I think it's very uh, technically perfect and expressing their feeling very well. And I'm sorry that you have missed it in the beginning and I want to return to it. Yes. You always make me cry. It's very strong. Yes, yes. It's very, it's very sad because when I, when I saw it, it's, it's very sad. It just talks to maybe to, to the soul and to simplicity. Maybe when I, when I was child, something childish, but, but something that touches you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, yes, I would like to, if someone want to add something, or just to someone here, please. Okay, okay, Daniel, yes, yes. please. Yes, hello, um, I'm Daniel Rothbart from George Mason University. I'm very impressed with your presentation and struck by, I think you said that the test itself 
led to them reflecting more deeply about their relationship with with the so-called enemy do mm -hmm. you do you feel that this kind of test should be promoted as a uh, exercise in reconciliation as not just to study the mm -hmm. actors but to actually promote um, a reflection on reconciliation yes i think uh, this is exactly the point of my research i want to add uh, extra tools to the instrumentary of uh, dialogue facilitator and i'm studying uh, which one uh, um, will work the best and i think this is very good because uh, being a dialogue facilitator, I found out that uh, what works is a personal story because, you know, you can uh, deny political cliche, but you cannot deny or almost cannot deny a personal story. And the real transformation happens when the other party is telling a story about themselves, not of what they heard on TV or any, but their true uh, actual experience. And that what actually moves the process forward. And by this exercise, they also think about themselves in this position of conflict and they try to imagine their other party. And that helps also to realize a lot about themselves. Those uh, remarks that uh, uh, people wrote that um, at some point I, I found out that uh, they are probably thinking the same about us. I think it's very... Uh, uh, you know, it, it's a huge point there. This is what happens when the real transformation going on, being able to uh, emphasize, you know, to see, actually see the other, what Levinas, uh, Levinas was saying, you know. Thank you. I would just like to do one comment. I really see very strong connection between Benjamin's presentation and your presentation, because he really stress importance of a person realizing what's going on inside her right and how and i saw a lot of very interesting ideas how people start understanding categorization uh, they decrease the level of homogenization homogeneity of perception themselves and others so there a lot of reflection which benjamin was stressing in his presentation i see a lot of great connections there thank you dear professor if, uh, if there are some other, uh, yeah, okay, I see. Okay, so um, thank you very much.